Now, in every faction, there's a unit that every time you come to it, you're like, why, why would I ever bother recruiting this? And it got me thinking, you know, what are the worst units for every single faction in the game? Sure, there are units like the zombies that are truly awful, but they're ridiculously cheap, so it kind of accounts for this. But I want to know what the real, truly abysmal units are, focusing on campaign, of course, because, you know, it's, it's kind of my thing. So that's what we're going to go through in today's video, the worst units for every single faction in the game in campaign. And also, it's not just the statistically worst, but the worst ones that are also kind of expensive or unlocked in a weird way. Okay, but that's not a good title, so it's just gonna be the worst units for every faction. All right, cool. Now, just really quick before we begin, this is another one of those videos that was done by the Discord. I ask a question, they give me their answers, and then I use their answers and give them no credit. It's a great deal. You should really take part. If you want to join the Discord, there's a link in the description. Also, uh, I'm still allowing entrance for the tournament until the end of this month, so if you message me on, you know, the 1st of July, then your entrant won't be counted because I'll already be picking the people that are going to compete. But if you want to enter the tournament, if you don't know about it, I'll really quickly give you a rundown. It's the Noobs for the Noob God tournament. I thought that was pretty funny. And uh, I'm aiming at people with as little multiplayer experience as possible. If you have never played multiplayer and you are, you know, looking to get into your first fight, this is a great way to do it because what you're going to be going against is other people that have never played multiplayer. It's not a conventional tournament. You don't just win by winning. All the rules are in the Discord, so be sure to have a look if you are interested. But it should be a lot of fun. Just be sure to get your application in before the end of the month, otherwise it won't be counted. And the winner of this tournament will get the DLC of their choice. So if you want to enter, join the Discord, read all the rules. If that sounds like something you're into, then send me a DM uh, with your multiplayer experience and your DLC. DLC of choice, so just send me a message like, I have played one multiplayer game and lost horribly, and my DLC of choice is the Wood Elves. That's all you need to do, let's get into the video. So, as usual, starting off with the High Elves, uh, it was it's, it's the White Lines, it's gotta be. They're not a bad unit by any means, they have good damage, they are reasonably tough. If you use them in the mid game, the problem with them is, you don't unlock them until you are way past the point where you should be using them. Like, when you play Tyrion, you start with one of these units, so it's not so bad, you know, you can kind of get some good use out of them, they do good damage against early game units, but when you actually unlock them by building the buildings, it's not to like tier 4, I believe, so it, it, they just don't really stand up. Like, at that same tier, you could get some, you know, Swordmasters, or maybe even some Phoenix Guard if you're feeling, you know, particularly adventurous. Uh, but I, I just don't understand why you would ever pick the White Lions. They're about as expensive to maintain as Lord and Seaguard with shields, and Lord and Seaguard with shields are a much more versatile unit, and they've got a lot more survivability. The main problem with White Lions is they just have no survivability. Sure, they have a bit of missile resist, they've got decent armor, but their melee defense its not really great, so if they go against anything reasonably tough, they're going to get absolutely evaporated. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't take these guys if I were you. Again, they're not bad, but for the time you unlock them, they're just... It doesn't make any sense. So that's why they are the worst unit for the Hiles, in mine and the Discord's opinion. This is all opinions. Oh yeah, good time to mention, this is all opinions. If you like a unit that I say is bad, then it's my opinion, it's your opinion. Don't take any offense, just trying to make a, trying to make a video here. <laughs> now for the Dark Elves, there was actually quite a lot of discussion around this one because a lot of people felt like the Cold One Knight should be on there. But ultimately, we came to the Dark Riders and I know I said, you know, the first unit you unlock it's always going to be the worst anyway, but for the Dark Riders, it is so severe that I couldn't not pick them. The thing with Dark Riders is, they are just so hilariously weak. They lose to literally anything that isn't like an archer that's already at half health because it's been shot to pieces. They are just utterly useless. Uh, sure, you can get them with shields and that makes them a little bit more survivable, and the ones with repeated crossbows or axe, they do decent damage, but the base Dark Riders, they are just abysmal. No damage, no survivability, no charge bonus. I just don't see why you'd ever bother taking them. I know I hate Cavs, so I'm kind of biased in this regard, but me and everyone else in the Discord were pretty much like, yep, your Dark Riders are just useless. I don't know why you'd ever bother taking them. Even though they are cheap, it doesn't excuse them being awful. They have abysmal stats. The only stat that they have that's good is speed at 92. And that's not even a good stat, because all that's going to happen is they're going to run in, die, run out, and then they're just going to get to the edge of the map even faster. Utterly useless. I would never bother taking them, if I were you, in my opinion. Now for the Lizard Men. Now, this one... There was quite a lot of debate around this one, and then we just realised that the answer was so clear, it's Feral Cold Ones. Good lord, they're trash. Unless you are using the right of, I believe it's Primeval Glory, that lets you summon them down, you know, and you can just attack the enemy backlines, and there's not really any stakes, because if they die, they're already deteriorating. I would never use these guys. They have awful melee stats, and no charge bonus, so they're not a shot cavalry, they're not a, you know, sitting in battle cavalry, they're not really anything. The only thing that they can go against, as I said, is undefended ranged units that are probably a little bit softened up anyway, and even then, I bet like a couple of units, maybe three units of archers at the least, could take this guy out. Now yes, they do have like 90 armour, but their melee defence is so poor that it doesn't matter, like it's all well and good having great armour, but if you're getting hit by nearly every single attack that comes your way, 
it's not really going to do much, is it? Plus, they obviously have no range defense, so that knight armor is just going to get chipped through over and over and over again, and they're not going to survive long at all. Now, because they're feral units, they're also going to rampage, and because they are so shit, this happens insanely quickly. Like, you send them in, they lose about 6 HP, and all of a sudden, they're out of control, and then they just stay and die even more, go into another rampage, die, die, and then die a little bit more. And the final piece of evidence that made us choose them as the worst unit for the lizard men is that you need a resource building to recruit them. So you not only, it's not like, you know, when you're going through the military trees, you'll pick up pretty much every building because you're like, okay, I, you know, I want to have access to all these units because they're good. And normally, you know, one tier you'll get, you know, cold one knights, cold one spear knights, and then feral cold one knights or whatever. I can't really remember the lizard men rust that much. But with these guys, you have to go out of your way to get a resource building just to recruit them. So you have to find a region that has it, build a building, it's only to recruit a unit that isn't any good. Yes, the resource building is also useful for, you know, resources, but I just don't understand why you'd ever bother to get this building just to recruit them. It, they're just not good. Now for the Skaven, this is one that I'm thinking is going to be a little bit controversial because it was in the Discord. Uh, I went for Eshin Triads, like a lot of people were saying, you know, Clan Rats because with the Skaven playstyle, Skaven Slaves are just fine because they could meet shield and you know, take all the aggro while the range units pick them apart, and that is correct. But Eshin Triads are so niche that I don't understand how anyone would ever get any use to them outside of playing Snitch. Now, I know this might not be fair because, you know, they were added alongside Snitch and they fit in with his playstyle, you know, sneaking around, Vanguard deployment, stalk, all this fun stuff, but they just don't make any sense. They're a stealth unit that's anti-large. What are they going to be sneaking up on? Unless you're going against, like, the Lizard Men and they have an Ancient Stegodon that sat at the back and then you can just swarm it with four units, I really don't understand how it's going to get any value. They have pitiful armor, sure they have 30% physical resist, but let's be honest, if they go in against something large, like some calf or some dinos, yeah, they're not going to survive two minutes. The only way I could see these guys working is sort of a stealth defense for your artillery, so if you put these guys to defend your artillery, if the enemy comes up with calf, they're not going to see them until they get there, and then it's too late and then they can fight them with their anti-large damage. Unfortunately, if they're not going against Dark Riders, they're probably going to lose that arrangement, and if the calf sees them, they can just run around them anyway, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Uh, I'd say the only thing they have going for them is the concealment bombs, but again, it's just going to make a unit that you're not really using invisible, so it can either run away or run around and not really accomplish anything. I don't personally like them. I, this was, again, a controversial one. It could go to any number of units in the Skaven roster, because apparently they've got quite a lot of units that are very situational and a little bit shitty. But this is the one I'm for personally. Now, for the Tomb King, it's, it's a really only question, it's the Karen, okay? But I could just say that, and then we could move on, but you know, we gotta we got stretch that video out for that for that rev, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, just, just have a look at those stats. Ooh, they're not good, they're really bad. The only one that's good is melee defense, and that's only because it's a large unit, but when a unit has 20 armor, having that much melee defense, it's kind of the opposite of the Feral Cold ones. You know, they have abysmal melee defense, but good armor, but it doesn't make any difference because they're still, you know, every single hit's going through. Whereas these guys, not as many hits going through, but ones that do, whoo, they hurt a lot. These guys are kind of like Felbats, but I like Felbats more, even though statistically they are worse. They're the only flying unit in the Tomb Kings, so they don't really fit. There's not really anything that they can compete with, and they're still awful. I wouldn't take them for the novelty of the flying unit. They're awful. I'd say the only good thing for these guys is to attack some really early ranged units, maybe to pin down some cav for your other units to shoot, but in either one of these situations, if they don't get out as soon as, you know, the situation starts to turn, they're, they're gone, they're out of there. It doesn't help that they also have awful leadership, so when they go in there, they will take some damage, start to break, and because they're an undead unit, they will start to crumble rather than retreat. There's an ice cream chuck. Again, can, can this please stop? The only upsides to this unit are the vanguard and the speed, but... To be honest, those two things are only going to make sure it dies even faster. Never take the carrion, it's useless. Now, full of Vampire Coast wrapping us up for Warhammer 2, we have the standard deck droppers. Th 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 I just don't see the point of them. Right, obviously, you unlock them, and then the next building tier up, you unlock their other two variants, which are infinitely better and cost, you know, not that much more. So you may as well just save on the upkeep of buying some of these guys, upgrade the building, and then get the better units, because these guys are trash. If anything attacks these guys, they will break. I tested, Felbats beat these guys. Yes, the creme de la creme of awful statistic flying units, even though they're better than Karens. They are statistically worse then. Even these guys can beat the deck droppers standard. They, even if they get a million shots off, the Felbats get into melee range and then absolutely slaughter. It wasn't even close. It was a slaughter of Felbats annihilating deck droppers. They are trash. 
the standard unit is just not even comparable to, you know, the bombers or the handguns. The handgun gets better range, it gets better arm piercing damage. The bombers, they get bombs that do flaming, explosive damage, so are just way better. I just don't understand why everyone wouldn't wait to unlock the better ones and use this guy. It's useless. Again, they have pretty awful leadership as well. And again, they're an undead unit, so, you know, if they get shot once and their leadership starts to break, yeah, they're going to crumble to nothing pretty soon. It's really hard to get your lord next to these guys so they can get their leadership back. They're just going to break almost 100% of the time. They are pretty bad. Just wait for the better ones. That, that It's totally worth waiting and saving your gold. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. You there. Are you a fan of books but lack the time or attention span to sit down to read one? Then worry not. Audible is here to save the day. They have the world's largest selection of audio books, audio dramas, and audio shows. Basically, anything you could ever want in an audio form, Audible has you covered. Though for lifetime listening, meaning even if you cancel your plan, you can still listen to any of the books you picked up until the end of time. They have an exchange service, meaning if you get a book and realize you don't like it or will never listen to it again, you can give it back to Audible in exchange for a credit, which you can spend on any other book in their collection. It's a truly wonderful experience with 24-7 concierge-level service, with a 98% satisfaction rate. To even have a handy application for your cellular device, meaning you can listen no matter where you are. You can listen in the car. You can listen in a park. You can even listen in bed to peacefully end the day before the existential dread comes and reminds you of that one argument you lost in year three with Jamie, where you should have insulted his mother after he insulted your father, but instead you did nothing because you're fake. So sign up today for a free trial on us. That's right, you can get an entire month for free, which includes one book to keep for life, and many other member-exclusive perks. Or if you're feeling particularly intellectual, you can sign up for three months at half the normal price. Yes, that's three months at half the normal price, coming in at just three nights. A month. Now that's what I call epic. Sign up for Audible today using the links in the description and support the most epic channel this side of the internet. And now we return you to your regularly scheduled programming. Now starting us off for Warhammer 1 races, we of course have the Empire, and for the Empire, we of course have the War Wagon. Now I know what you're thinking, the War Wagon it has pretty good damage, it has decent range, it has a load of ammo so it can shoot forever, it can fire while it's moving so you can, you know, skirt around the melee lines and take most things out. The issue with it is, it's literally just one stat, it's the speed. It is so goddamn slow, and I see why it's so slow, it's to make it a little bit more balanced, but this speed just makes it awful. It can be caught by many types of infantry. Some like skinks can probably catch it, some rats can catch it. It can be caught out by so many different units that if you want to do even a slightly spicy flank, you know, you want to move it around the enemy lines and shoot into their backs, yep, you're just going to get ripped to pieces by literally anything that decides to pay attention to you. So if you're not a god at micro, this makes these units absolute trash. You can't just send them round on like a big route to circle around the enemy lines and do lots of damage. No, you have to babysit them the entire time because, you know, a bloody giant can be lumbering towards them at 0.1 miles per hour and it's going to catch them up if you don't pay attention to it. They're just bad. Also doesn't help that once they do get caught, they have some of the worst melee stats I've ever seen. Yes, I know, essentially, it's a big cardboard box being dragged along by two horses with a load of guys with guns, but... It's melee stats are just abysmal, like you couldn't give it, you know, some melee attack, you know, like those uh, assassins that when they're in melee, they're actually shooting and it's not consuming ammo because they're in melee. You could give that to these guys, it'd bump them up a little bit, give them some more survivability, but as they are, they are pretty awful, unless you are micro Jesus. So for the average Joe, like myself, who's a big shitter at Cav, uh, I, I would say, yeah, they're, they're pretty bad. Hey, also, have you noticed my, you can't really see it, my poster, hang on, it's got cornflakes, I'm going to show you. Can you see it now? No, you can't really see it. <laughs> The sunlight. Hang on. There you go. You can kind of see it. It's, it's cornflakes. Get it? Because it's like corn, like 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 the food cornflakes, but it's actually corn. The chaos god. It's a great joke. Anyway, now the vampire counts. We all know I love the vampire counts. If you've been on this channel at any time, you know they're my favourite. I love them so much, and it pains me to say, actually, it doesn't really, because I hate these units. Uh, they're the worst units. It's not the regular corpse cart. It's the Balefire Corpse Cart. And I know what you're thinking. The regular Corpse Cart is worse because it doesn't have the extra effect that the Balefire does. And you're right. But the Balefire is more expensive and its effect is awful. It is useless. It's... If you don't know anything about the Vampire Counts, Balefire, Corpse Cart, I'll quickly just give you the rundown. Uh, what it does, uh, the regular Corpse Cart, when it goes in, it buffs your troops with like five melee attack and defense and nerfs the enemy troops with, I think, something similar. Again, the numbers, I'll put them on the screen now, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Now, the Balefire Corpse Cart gets this, and it also increases the ability recharge time of any characters that are within its range. So what you need to have is an enemy character that's in or close enough to melee combat that it's within range, so you can sit next to it, do nothing, and slow down its ability recharges. 
Obviously, this is going to be most useful versus spellcasters because, you know, that's kind of their entire point to, you know, cast spells and use abilities and all that fun stuff. Unfortunately, spellcasters, they're not really too known for being on the front lines, so most of the time you're just going to be sat there not really doing anything. You, might, you may as well be a regular corpse cat because you're not going to get any value out of that effect. For the extra, I think it was like 150 gold, at least in multiplayer, it, it just, it, it's not worth it. It's a terrible unit. I don't know why you'd ever take it. On top of that, it also has the same awful stats as the Corpse Cat. Now, the Corpse Cat is just a tool there that is there to buff. It's not there to, you know, tear the ass up. It's not there to do damage. It is there to buff. So, it's melee stats, it's combat stats, abysmal. It, you just, you don't want to go near it. You just li literally move it close to combat, leave it. It buffs your troops. That's about the most you can get out of it. It's the same with this guy. He can't do anything. So, if you're not going to be in use of that ability, then you are getting literally no use out of the unit. It's terrible. Never take it. Rather take either the Unholy Lodestone, which is really good because it gets regeneration, or the base corpse cart and save yourself some gold. But personally, I'd probably just wait for the Unholy Lodestone or the Moth's Engine if you can, if you can be patient enough, because, ooh, that's better. Now, for the Dwarves, the Dowie, the Short Boys, I have decided to go for Rangers. And I know what you're thinking, Rangers, they are a good unit, and yeah, you're right, they are a really good unit. In fact, they have comparable damage to Quarrelers, they're a little bit cheaper. Sure, they might not have the same melee prowess as Quarrelers, but they're pretty good units. The issue with them is the way you unlock them is asinine. It is beyond stupid. I checked the definition of this word so I could use it. Yep, devoid of all intelligence. Yep, it's, it's pretty much no offense, CA, of course. Love you guys. Keep me on the partner program. I'm begging you, Josh. Please do not let me go off. But anyway, yeah, the way you unlock them is it's just awful. It needs a little bit of a tweak, if you ask me. So you unlock them by building a building. I can't remember what it's called, but it's this one. Put it on screen now, and it unlocks you regular rangers, bugman's rangers, and rangers with great weapons. Fair enough, you do need extra buildings to unlock bugmans and great weapons, but they're buildings that you're probably going to have built anyway. So you're going to unlock these three units at the same time, and great weapons and bugmans rangers are both really good units, definitely better than regular rangers, so why would you ever take regular rangers? It just doesn't make any sense. Now, again, as I said, they're not a bad unit, but the other units are just better, and if you unlock them at the same time, why would you ever take them? It just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Now, if they moved recruitment around and made it so that the building, it's like a two tier and the first tier, you get regular rangers and the second tier, you get, you know, bugmans and great weapons or something. I'd be all for that. I think, you know what? That's a great change. Rangers are actually pretty good because you can unlock them a little bit earlier or earlier than these guys, at least. And they do good damage or a little bit cheaper. They're great. But as they are right now, it makes no sense to take them. Just take the other two, unlock the other buildings. You're going to need them anyway. I, I just don't get it. Sorry, <laughs> but, but that's how it is. Now, for the green skins, uh, it's the giant, like, especially with the latest DLC, the giant, it has no place on the army. It is completely irrelevant. They're essentially just a massive range target for enemies to shoot at without really doing anything. You know, they're just a massive hitbox that's got, fair enough, a lot of HP, and fair enough, can do some decent damage when they get into combat. But there is units that can do the same job as them pretty much better. You know, you could get some of the new stone trolls, they can do pretty much a lot of damage, and they can integrate into melee lines so they can be a lot more protected, last a lot longer, maybe not do as much damage, I'll grant you that, but they can do plenty and they're cheaper. Or, if you can bother saving up, you get a rogue idol, which is... <laughs> it's, it, it's way better, let's be honest, there's not even really a question there, the rogue idol is... <laughs> oh, it's amazing, I love that thing, it's so cool. Yeah, it replaces a giant. You don't need a giant if you've got a rogue idol. So, uh, yeah, the, the, it's just useless. It doesn't have a place. It needs either reworking or tossing out the faction or making it into something completely different because it just does not belong there anymore. Feels bad, but uh, that's, that's the way it is. I feel like we're getting through them a little bit quicker now, which, uh, <laughs> as we get through these, uh, you're going to see why. Uh, we come to Bretonia. My, my, <laughs> I don't like Bretonia. I'm sorry, man. I know they're good. I know they're... I just don't like them. They're not for me. But, anyway... Uh, the worst unit of them, it, it's got to be the Mounted Yeoman. Now, I'm talking about the variant that doesn't have ranged fire because the ones that have ranged fire are pretty good because, you know, they can shoot from ranged, they don't need to go into melee, they don't need to have decent stats and anything else. As long as they can pick units apart, I believe they do poison damage as well. That's all they need to do, they help the army. Good unit. Now, these guys, they are unlocked just before Knight's Errant, and Knight's Errant, they are so much better. For such a cheap upgrade of a building and then just a little bit more upkeep, a little bit more cost, they're just infinitely more better. I don't know why you'd ever go for Mounted Yeoman over the Knight's Errant. It's just not even a competition. Now, of course, yes, you need the first vow to unlock Knight's Errant. Well, not unlock them, but have them without extreme upkeep. But the first vow, it's ridiculously easy. You need to build five buildings with that Lord in the region, research five researchers, or level up five times, and you can grind levels. You can build buildings. It's In the early game, 
like I test this on Fey Enchantress, you could literally do that in like, you know, within the first five turns if you're working really hard. More realistically, you could easily do it within like the first ten. So I just I, I, I don't know why you'd ever take Mountain Demon over Knight's Errand. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. Their stats, they're just bad. They aren't good in sustained combat. They aren't good in cycle charging. They just do nothing. So just don't bother. Wait for something better. Now we come to the final DLCs for Warhammer 1. Uh, these are the ones that I haven't really played yet. So I had to kind of rely on the Discord for this. And, you know, just what I could tell off of a vague glance. So if some of these units are incorrect, I, I do apologize. But I'm doing my best here, man. <laughs> now, first up, we have Norska. Uh, it's, it's the giant again. Yeah, the, the Giants, they, they'd really need something doing to them, because in every faction, they're pretty bad. <laughs> they're, they're real bad. Yeah, I, I don't know why you'd, uh, why you'd ever go for them, for the Norskans. Uh, they're pretty much like Mammoths, but Mammoths fill the role better. Yes, I'm talking about the Feral Mammoths here, and even though they have Rampage, they, they, they're, they're still better than Giants, you know? Even though they go out of control, they can still do the job a lot better than Giants can. They're just, they're just not good, so we don't need to explain this again. Giants, they don't have a role. They need something doing to them. Moving on. For the Wood Elves. Now, this one was quite a bit of discussion because a lot of units in the Wood Elves, because they need a rework, they're not great. But one thing that made me decide the unit I have decided on was because of how you unlock them in the campaign. So I went on a look and you unlock a building that gets you the Hawk Riders, I believe they're called, and then the upgrade to that gets you Eagles. Yes, the Eagles have better melee stats, but the Hawk Riders, they have ranged fire, they can do some light melee charging if you can move them around nice and quickly. They've got great speed so they can avoid a lot of damage. Again, they can attack from range, which is super important for the Wood Elves because, you know, it's kind of their gimmick, do, using missile damage above all else. I, I just don't understand why you'd ever bother to upgrade the building and also then buy a unit. I, I just don't understand. It just doesn't make any sense to me. It just seems like a waste of gold, a waste of resources. Yeah, the Eagle, it just doesn't seem very good. Now, I will say it's not a terrible unit. No, it's, it's not awful by any means. It's actually a fairly decent unit. It's just that how you unlock it and how it compares to the unit that it's meant to be, well, not replacing, but, you know, being upgraded to, it, it just doesn't make any sense. I don't I don't see why I'd ever go for it. It does okay damage, but not really any armor piercing, so by the time you lock it in the game, it's going to really fall behind compared to other units it's going to be going against, at least in terms of damage. But yes, that's it for the Wood Elves. Now, for the Beastmen, it is. It's the Giant again. <laughs> Feels real bad. Uh, see if you can guess what's coming for the Chaos. I bet you won't. Uh, so... Yeah, it's the Giants again, just just underwhelming, easily replaceable because the Saigor exists, which is, you know, way better. It has comparable-ish melee stats, it does ridiculous range damage, it is just infinitely better. I don't see why you'd ever use a Giant when you can use a Saigor. Moving on, nice and quick, don't need to talk about that again. Now of Chaos, it's the Giant, no it isn't the Giant. Although, you could make an argument for the Giant, it requires its own building, again, it's not great, but it isn't what I actually chose. Chaos Marauders, and yes, I know what I said at the start of this, it's not just the cheapest units that got the worst stats, but this one makes sense because when you start as Chaos, okay, you can start off by recruiting, you know, as many Marauders as you want. Uh, you start off with, I believe, three growth, and to unlock the building that gets you Chaos Warriors is four growth, which you can get in like three turns, and then you can get Chaos Warriors, which are better in literally every stat. So why would you ever, ever go for Marauders when you can just get Chaos Warriors? Yes, if you get the Great Weapons Marauders, they have better damage, better arm piercing than Chaos Warriors, but they are also worse in pretty much every stat, so they're not going to last as long, and if you're playing as Chaos, you know you want a lot of, you're going to use your Horsemen Missile Units, your Hell Cannons, your Monsters, so you want a nice sturdy front line to protect all that. I, I just don't understand why, why you would ever go Marauders for that purpose, unless you're doing some sort of gimmick Marauder army, in which case, have fun, but... For the general user, and for me having a look, and for the Discord having a look, it, uh, it just didn't look good, Chief. No, no, did not at all. Not a fan of it. I believe that wraps it up for the worst unit for every single faction in the game. My camera is about to die, so I'm just gonna... I'll be right back. Yes, I hope you enjoyed this video covering the worst units for every faction in the game. If you did, be sure to leave it a like, share it with your friends, share it with your grandma, share it with your dog, literally anyone that uh, will watch. I, I could do with the views, I'll tell you what. If you uh, if you did not like this video, if you disagree, be sure to leave a dislike and a comment saying which unit is actually worse for each faction, or how one unit is better than you know, I've said it was, and I'll be sure to read that and, uh, and and cry myself to sleep every single night until the end of time. I'd appreciate that very much. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, I do these sort of videos on Mondays. I do kind of guide videos on Fridays and other things. I did a video on Frostpunk last week that I was really quite proud of, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. And uh, I'm trying to do some battle campaigns and some streams, you know, I'm trying to trying to expand my horizons, you know, do some interesting stuff. If you've got any suggestions, leave them down below. I'll be sure to read them. Also, be sure to subscribe if you want to see all that and uh, hit that bell notification, you know, all that, all that funky stuff. And of course, join the Discord, as I mentioned at the start, you get to collaborate in videos, 
all sorts of fun stuff. It's the best way to get in contact with me if you have any questions. There's a load of people on there that will help you if you need any game advice. It's a great time all around. One more quick plug here if you want to enter the tournament, then be sure to join the Discord, send me a message with your multiplayer experience and your DLC of choice before the end of the month. If I get a message on July 1st, this is British time, I will not answer it. I will not consider you for entrance, unfortunately. So if you want to enter, be sure to do it before then and then you can enter and it'll be a fun time you can win a dlc you can have a lot of fun and of course it'll all be on the channel so that'll be excellent but yes i believe that covers everything so uh i hope you enjoyed the video and i shall see you in the next one life is pain i hate myself